We're here with J.R. Sean Johnson, who has done a number of projects here in New York, one of them being 35mm, which just uh, concluded. I want to talk about what you've done here in the city and you know where you came from and your journey as an actor. Cool. Um, I started performing when I was around 12 years old, doing a community theater back home in Fort Worth, Texas, playing roles like Peter Pan as a boy. You know, it's never really played by girls, and I was I got to play it as a boy, and so uh, that was kind of my first taste of what the stage was like. And uh, ever since then, I knew I wanted to go to New York and I wanted to try for the big leagues. So uh, I would audition for regional theaters back home, and I got to be in Peter Pan with Kathy Rigby. It was my first professional production. I played John Darling. Did you earn your equity card from that? I didn't actually. Um, I was just considered one of the non-equity members. Um, and I went on to do West Side Story and Beauty and the Beast and Oklahoma and just a bunch of stuff at Casa Mignana um, back home, which was a great theater to have in my backyard because they produced such um, great work and brought in a lot of New York actors for me to learn from and grow with. Um, and it wasn't until after I went away to college um, to NYU, I came back home to do summer stock season with CASA after my freshman year at NYU, and um, we were doing a chorus line, and I got cast uh, as Mark, mm -hmm. and uh, that production ended up touring to another regional theater in the area, and under an equity contract, a regional tour, everyone has to be an equity member, mm -hmm. so I kind of got my card by default through that crazy situation. Okay. I was 17 years old, I think. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. Very part that down. Totally. What did you do after that tour ended? Um, I um, went back to school um, my sophomore year, uh, learned a lot, got a great voice teacher. I went to NYU Steinhardt. I was a vocal major, so a music major. And then my junior year of college, I did uh, a production of Floyd Collins. Um, which everyone tells me is like um, an acclaimed college production of Floyd Collins, which is so cool. And it's that's why I came to New York in the first place yeah. was to go to school in the city because of the visibility that you have mm -hmm. with being in New York and just having that kind of palette to work with artistically. So um, a lot of people found out who I was through that production and. Then I was auditioning for the national for Broadway replacements because of course line the revival right. was happening at that time, and I I auditioned for a good year and a half before they finally called me in for the national tour of a chorus line and I'd already played the role regionally and got mm -hmm. my equity card from it so I uh, finally got a national tour my junior year of college and that's a pretty big deal dropped out of school and. Haven't been back since. <laughs> and then after the national tour, did you was that what led you back to Broadway to do hair? Or yeah. Was that stuff in between. Um, I kind of wanted to only do six months on the road. You know, uh, um, I'd done a chorus line before. It was a great show, great experience. So many friends from it. But I kind of told myself and my agents that I only wanted to be there for six months, and I wanted to come back to the city and see what else could happen for me. And. Um, lucky enough, the week I got back from a chorus line, I got an audition for the revival of Hair, and they were looking for the understudy for Claude, and uh, I went in, and a week later I booked my first Broadway show. That's amazing. And how many times did you get to go on? Oh God, like over 20 some odd times, 25 times for Claude, I went on about 20 some odd times for Wolf. And then a lot for the ensemble has yeah. considered a swing that covered two principal roles. Now in that show, you didn't. That was that was a pretty widely acclaimed show when yeah. it came back. There was there was some nudity. Did you have to partake in that? I did I, I got naked every single time I went on for a tribe member or for Wolf? Yeah. But Claude is the only one. How was that, that a little doesn't... weird for your first Broadway show? Or, yeah, I don't know. Or it, just such a freeing thing because of the show you were in. Yeah, it was so <laughs> freeing. You know, we all had the choice of whether or not to get naked, and um, I thought, why not? You know, it's hair. It's, yeah. it's a statement. I mean. Uh, it's, it's the end of Act 1, and the entire cast is screaming the word freedom at the top of their lungs, and they're all together and beautifully nude, and so it was a cathartic experience, right. really. And after Hair, then what, what did you go on to? Um, after Hair, 
I chilled out for a little bit. I went um, to Barrington Stages up in the Berkshires and did a workshop of a new musical called Pool Boy that's still kind of trickling around out there. Yeah. Um, got to work with like Sarah Gettlefinger and a really good friend of mine, Courtney Wilson. And it was a great cast, um, great experience. It was my uh, first like time to really sink my teeth into a new project and a lead role. And um, I had a blast with it. And what's 35mm about? I know Lindsay Mendez from Godspells and yeah. she's phenomenal. Yeah, 35mm um, is a concept started by Ryan Scott Oliver and his partner Matthew Murphy, who is a photographer. So Ryan wrote the music and Matthew did the photographs for it. And it's essentially like art, inspiring art, inspiring art to be really pretentious about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't worry, we'll translate that for the video. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan would write some songs and Matthew would get inspired by those songs and go shoot photos and then Matthew would go shoot photos and Ryan would get inspired by those photos and create songs. So it was a very collaborative uh -huh. mishmash of a project. And um, Ryan, two and a half years ago, asked me and Lindsay and Alex to sing these songs that he wrote based on these photos. And so for two and a half years we've been workshopping this really exciting new piece of theater that never really has been done before, you know, yeah. melding the worlds of photography and music and theater all together in one evening, and we've had such a great response because it's incredible music and the photography is stunning, and so, uh, and you're going to be recording a cast album in yeah. Mar uh, May, that's, that's fantastic. We've had our first day of recording uh, last week, and we're going to finish up the recording this Monday, and uh, the album drops in the middle of May, so we'll have That's amazing. a first class recording at Ryan's really cool. This is your first, were you, you were on the hair recording as well? Yeah, I did the hair recording and I did the Catch Me If You Can recording. Mm -hmm. They let me sing on that even though I was the standby for Activate. Um, but this is the, this is my first recording where I, um, I'm one of the principal roles, one of the principal voices in it. That's, that's amazing. And I know, you know, you've had a been very lucky since you've come to New York, or obviously towns, and so it's not just luck. What advice would you have to other people that are just starting in the business? You know, they're not equity now, they're right. just coming up. You know, what advice do you have to them, give them? You know what? It takes uh, nerves of steel um, to do what we do. You know, it, you face so much rejection and so much disappointment, and uh, I have to like say that the first thing you have to do is look at the words rejection and disappointment and can and flip them. Mm -hmm. You know, think of them as learning experiences or things that make you stronger. Because um, if you hit the wall and fall every single time that you don't get that callback or um, you don't get that role, uh, it'll end up defeating you and you, you'll go down a downward spiral. So it, it's really, it's positive visualization, Yeah. you know? Um, every time I walk into a room, it's a new experience. It's it's a new, it's it's a it's a way for me to give my gift. I've done my work. I've done my preparation. I've done my research. Uh, as long as I am prepared going into those rooms, I can't do anything wrong. If it's because I'm too short or too tall or mm -hmm. my hair is not the right color, um, you know, there's all those different things that get in the way of casting and can't let it get personal, it's just part of the yeah. journey. Does your attitude help? I mean, you seem like you're kind of laid back and you know, you're kind of chill and whatever yeah. happens. Kind yeah. of, does that help you in, in when you're going into auditioning in yeah. terms of keeping yourself not grounded so much as, you know, letting it roll off your back, whatever happens? Yeah, kind of, you know, I, it hasn't always been that easy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, at the beginning, it was definitely not that easy. Yeah, has I it mean, come with your success though? It's totally. And it's come with having a fantastic therapist. Yeah. <laughs> you which, know? which you need because of the success, which Absolutely. you can afford because of the success. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, um, you keep going forward. If, yeah. if you have the drive, if you have the love of what it is that you want to do, then nothing can hold you back. No one can tell you that you can't, really. And it's New York City. You know, I, that's why I came here for school. Because mm -hmm. I, I was going to use NYU, yes but I was also going to use the city. There's so many opportunities out there. There's so many classes, seminars, workshops, groups, blogs, things to read. Yeah. You know, the, it's, this city is, is the mecca for right. the arts. And so 
to live here and not use that to your advantage, I think is uh, not a great idea. Thank you so much. It's been very, it's been very helpful, I'm sure, to the people watching. And, cool. You know, good luck in the future. Thanks a lot.